Well, this morning, a new study is raising concerns about the decline in cervical cancer screenings. Research shows that screening rates dropped 6%. It was up at 47% in 2019, now just 41% in 2023. That report, which was published earlier this month, suggests that declining screening rates are making it harder to detect cervical cancer early when it is most treatable. Dr. Lucky Seacon joins us now with more on this. She's a double board certified REA specialist and OBGYN at Reproductive Medicine Associates of New York and a friend of the show, Dr. Seacon. Great to have you with us. So why do you think we're seeing this decline in screenings, first of all? Well, I think there's so many different reasons. You know, in the past five years post-pandemic, a lot of people fell off the wagon with regular health screenings and are still kind of getting caught up. Um, there is a lack of awareness, particularly in younger women. Studies have shown that women aged 21 to 29 are probably the least likely to stay up to date on their pap smears as well as certain mar individuals from marginalized communities like non-white women or members of the LGBTQ community are also more likely to not be as up to date with their healthcare surveillance. And if you live in a rural area where there's less clinics and less availability of resources, that can also be a factor. And Dr. Seacon, a lot of people might know that there's this tie with HPV, cervical cancer almost always caused by HPV. There is a vaccine um, that many women have yes. probably received that was really for that HPV, which can then cause this. Explain that and how the screening works for both of these things and how often it should be happening. So HPV is a virus that's ubiquitous, right? A lot of people lack an awareness of the fact that up to 80 to 90 percent of men and women will have HPV at least at, at one point in their lifetime. And this is something that our immune system can recognize and clear, but some cases can be very persistent. And over the course of 10 to 20 years, if it lingers, it can transform some of the cells on the cervix into cancerous cells. So cervical cancer is actually one of the most preventative forms of cancer, not only because we have solutions or screening like pap smears, which if you stay up to date with them, you can identify these changes early and then proactively treat them. But as you mentioned, there is now a very effective and safe HPV vaccine that protects against nine different strains of the HPV virus. And this has been shown to prevent up to 90% of cases of cervical cancer, anal cancer, as well as cancers of the mouth and throat. What should a woman ask for at her doctor? What should she know about in terms of when she should be doing something and what she should say? So previously, when the HPV vaccine first came out in the early 2000s, it was limited to girls and women between ages 9 and 26. But now studies have shown that even if you're older, up to age 45, even if you've had prior HPV infections, this can still be an effective preventative strategy. And it's something you should discuss with your doctor, particularly if you find yourself in your 30s or 40s now, and this was never offered to you when you were an adolescent. It's important to be up to date with your pap smear. So if you're sitting at home, hearing us talk about this, thinking, hey, I don't even remember the last time I saw my GYN or had a pap smear. This is your sign to call your doctor today and get back on track because pap smears do save lives. Dr. Lucky Seacon, great advice right there. Call today. Thank you. Great to see you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.